And now we're shifting our focus to some Ghanaians who may have been stranded in South Africa due to the lockdown. Now, the majority of these people may have gone there for business or for pleasure, but unfortunately, they had their business cut short as a result of COVID-19. This time around, instead of being able to return home, Ghana was under lockdown and South Africa also initiated its lockdown. And so they've been left stranded. And if they don't have money to pay further for a hotel and uh, don't have family in South Africa as well, then what are they going to do? And how easy or difficult is it going to be trying to get back home on time? And so I'll be speaking to one of such people. He is Kinsley and he currently is in South Africa. Now he says that he went there for business and unfortunately got stuck. Good morning, Kinsley, and thank you for joining us. I hope you're well. Good morning. Uh, yes, I'm doing well, please. Okay, so tell us a story from the beginning. When did you leave for South Africa? Okay, uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity to air my frustrations on your media. I, I left Ghana on the, on the 8th of March. Okay. And I was supposed to return back on the 5th of April. On the 5th of April? I was supposed to return on the 5th of April. Mm. Yes. So uh, I got here by on the 9th of uh, March. I started going out to do my business here and there. Then before then, before I started hearing that the, the infection, people are, being, uh, people are getting the infection and here and there. By the time I realized, they said they are around 50. The next day, the true time, they said they are 200 and all those things. By the time I realized, hey, um, there were some restrictions already that you cannot even make a move to go out again. Were there restrictions and, in um, South Africa by yes, then? Okay. When, yeah, exactly. When this thing started, when they started it, they started giving some directives and all those things. So. I was like, well, I don't know whether I'm going or I'm staying or whatever. And moreover, it is something that I've never experienced before in my life. Mm. So I don't know how things are going to happen like. So I, in fact, I called my airline to find out that I'm supposed to return on the 5th of April. So am I going to get a flight? Because, in fact, I have no clue to what is happening. So mm -hmm. he said they were going to get back to me. Or no. And I didn't get any feedback from them. So, on the 26th of, uh, of March, March, yeah, yes, and then there was a lockdown. Hoping that maybe before my time, maybe there will be flights to go back home. And then when we get to the time, there was no flight. And in fact, things are beginning to be very difficult because I, while I leave, I, I have to rent a place. It's not a family home, so I paid hmm. for that place. It's about $250 a month. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, so, you know, you have to go up. You have to do everything by yourself and here and there. It was getting more frustrating because I don't even know when I'm leaving. I don't even know when I'm getting out from here. And then, in fact, I'm not working here for me to say that um, at least I'm going to earn some income here. So... Whatever I, is, I can still manage to some whatever time this thing will be over. Uh, okay. So, yeah. Before you even move on, let me ask. So, did you at least alert the Ghana mission in South Africa um, when you got into South Africa? Because as at that time, there had been conversations about infections in Africa as well. And so, did you even expect that anything like this was going to happen? And did you get in touch with the Ghana mission there? Well, I... I you know, you and I, we know that this our generation we have not experienced something like this before. So it was kind of difficult to anticipate what is going to happen. So in fact, what I did was to, I call, I tried calling the embassy, the high commission. Anytime you call them, there's an, it's an entry machine. And so a good Samaritan gave me one officer over there to talk to. So when I spoke with, her, with him, he also directed me to someone who was in charge of these situations like that. Mm. In fact, I spoke with her. And the, what she was saying is that um, what she was okay. saying is that yeah. there's nothing at the moment that they can do to uh, help us because there's nothing to pass. Yes, so if there's any need, anything, they will let us know. She was saying what? There was okay. nothing they could do for you because there was no funding? Is that what you said? 
Yeah, there's not any directive from the above. That's we we they, they, there's no directive from above. So if there's anything, they will let me. Okay, but I or know MD, that they also mm -hmm. carry on. They sorry. also confirmed to me that a lot of people have been calling. Mm. They also made me know that a lot of people have been calling mm -hmm. for assistance. Okay, now you being a businessman, I know we're supposed to have gotten a, a few other people to join us in this conversation so as well. Roughly, how many more people do you have there from Ghana who have been stranded? Well, I, I could confidently say that we are more than 100. Please. More than 100 Ghanaians. How are they all surviving? Yes. You are saying that you've paid $250 a month for accommodation. And this is cost yes. that you hadn't budgeted for, right? Very well. What about these yes. other people? Do you have any idea how they are also managing? Well, I, you know, everybody for himself, God for us all. So sometimes I don't know how they are surviving. But what I know is that they are stranded. They are ready to go back home. And that's all they are all craving. So when I contacted them, it's like, I mean, when I contacted them, we should, let's find a way to, let the government hear of us, they were so excited. Mm. And unfortunately, they are supposed to be with us, but just the fact that there's a lockdown, you can't go anywhere, you cannot locate people, you cannot travel anywhere. So All right. that is, if not, you would have been getting a lot of people at the background talking to you. Okay, are you ready to pay for your flight back? That means that you may have lost out on the tickets that could have brought you back home already because you paid for that previously. Now, I remember that South Africa... Uh, chartered the flights to come for some of its citizens from Ghana and they had to pay for right. the tickets. If government says that we're going to do the same for you, are you willing to pay for a ticket to come back home? The, the hard truth is that it's going to be difficult for me to say I'm going to pay for another ticket when I know very well that as I'm traveling, I'm supposed to pay in and out and I did so. And as I'm sitting here, as I'm standing here right now, most of my money has gone into rent, feeding, and other stuff. So I, 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 it's going to be difficult for me to pay for another ticket now. Mm. What I, I was pleading for the government to do is either he evacuate us from here or he open up the airport for us to come back so that the airlines can come and then pick us from but, here. But these then, airlines have run down. South Africa Airways has sent every worker home, basically. And so it is not operating at this point. I don't know if they are the ones you flew with. It could have been another flight. But I'm just talking about how the, you know, the, the, the flights have also been affected badly by COVID-19. And so there's probably no, no way they can even refund the money at this point. What if they also say that we don't have money to even fly you back because we've run out of well, business? Well, that's going to be difficult because... In fact, I spoke with the airlines, the one I brought here, at yeah. South Africa Airway, is Rwan Air. Okay. I have been in contact with the agents in Ghana, and they are ready to, even, even if it is not Rwan Air, that is coming. Mm hmm Kinsley, can you hear us? Another airline to... Sorry, come uh, again. So you were talking other... about the conversation you had with the authorities at Rwan Air, and what did they say? Very well. I had. Uh, okay. Well, we're having a challenge. Netflix, Hello, can you please. hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Please go on. Sorry. Uh, so, I had a conversation with the agent in Ghana, that's Rwan Air, and they were like, if anything, they are ready to fix that into any other airlines that is coming to Ghana. So, what matters most is that the airport is not working. So they cannot come there. So okay. that is a frustrating thing now. Yeah. But you know that for every traveler that came into Ghana on the 21st and 22nd of March, they were put into yeah. mandatory quarantine. Um, so you are going to have to deal with that if government even decides to open the ports. Um, uh, that's not a problem. At it's least not. I'm at, at okay. Home. But, but we at spoke to... I'm at home, so mm. I, I don't have a problem. Yes. All right, we, we spoke to someone in South Africa and he mentioned that the authorities were giving out, you know, some food and some money to citizens, as well as some other Ghanaian nationals who are living there as well. Have you received any, have you heard of any 
Ghanaian living in South Africa that's benefiting from this and possibly if you could also benefit? No, if there's anything like that, I'm sure the High Commission would have let me know about it because I even spoke with them in a few uh, minutes ago. Uh, I spoke with them. So if there's anything, there's one thing that they were trying to let me know that in, they have associations. All Ghanaians here have associations. Each province have associations. So uh, most of the time they have registered with them as a commission, as a mission. So in case of anything that happens to them, they come to their rescue. So I okay. said that me, I don't live here. I don't stay here. I'm here to do business and go back. So whatever happens, I have to fall on my mission, high permission here. So that was what I'm doing. Hmm. So they said that our case is a exceptional one. They said our case is a exceptional one. So if there's anything, they, they will let us know. Kisley, do you have so family in South been, Africa? Sorry? Do you have family in South Africa? Just in case this lockdown extends, and just in case Ghana also extends, um, you know, the, the closure of its borders. Do you have any family uh, that you can rely on? Well, I have a sister that uh, is not here with me. She lives okay. around. Sometimes, in case of anything, I fall on her. But the truth is that uh, I live somewhere and she's also living somewhere. And because of the lockdown, we don't even meet each other. If there's anything, then there's another electronic means that she can assist with me, mm. assist me with. So that has been the, the frustrating thing. And so I am not sure that anybody is sharing food to any stranded Ghanaians in South Africa. This if whoever tough. said that, well, I, I have not gotten the opportunity to get that offer from anyone. Okay. All right. Well, Kinsley, thank you so much. And we hope and pray that our authorities uh, have watched this interview and, you know, hopefully there's something that can be done am about I, it. Am, am I talking to Bella? Yes, this is Bella. Bella, Bella Mundi, you know, I want, please, if you can give me a minute of your time to just say something. Okay. All right. I, they're saying that uh, out of sight is out of mind. Uh, I want to plead you our president, Nana Akufuado, this afternoon or this morning, that, uh, yes, we are out of sight, but we are not out of mind. We are citizens, and we are one of his children who are stranded somewhere in the world, and we are pleading with him that I know he is a father of us. He loves all of us. He wants to protect all of us. I am begging him that we are stranded. He should do something for his stranded citizens who are living in other countries. And we will never forget if it does so. Um, I'm also pleading that every other, the ministry should also do something for us. And even if they have to contact the embassy or the high commission here, they should do that because, in fact, they are not in to assist anybody. Hmm. And I'm pleading with the president to come to our aid. All right, Kinsley. Thank you very much. I mean, my, my heart is breaking here, but... I really hope that something can be done about it. Please stay safe. Hold on. Help is coming. Bella, thank you. Sir. Thank you so much Sorry, for speaking to us. Thank you, Bella. God bless you. God bless you too.